Welcome back to this video. In this video we are going to see uh, again we have two networks here uh, one network and two networks not only two networks we have two VLANs VLAN 10 VLAN 20 so we have watched the last video it's almost similar diagram here except this part from switch to the router we only have one line here the last video we used two lines for each VLANs but in this video uh, there is only like uh, one line and uh, therefore these both uh, VLANs has to go through this one line so that is something called router on stick so this is the router and it's, it looks like a stick is holding the router so with this one line both of these VLANs 10 and 20 will go through this line and therefore after the configuration one network should communicate with two network so first of all we have assigned the PCs as 1.1 1.2 from the one network and which is also the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 is two network 2.1 2.2 and uh, we have to now move the port uh, so we have to go to the switch f01 and f02 will we have to move to vlan 10 f03 and f04 we have to move to vlan 20 and one important step in, uh, on switch is that we have to uh, do the trunking here on this interface which is F024 because why we do trunk the trunk job is to carry multiple VLANs across one line the last video we didn't do trunk because we had two separate links for each VLAN therefore we didn't have to configure trunking but here we have to because there's only one line and that one line has to carry both VLANs from both networks then only this communication will happen so let's go to switch enable configure terminal so let's create the VLANs first so before we create let's see if there are any VLANs now you'll see the the default ones like the uh, the, the native VLAN, VLAN 1 and also these ones but we have to, we don't have 10 or 20 yet so we need to create and creating is just simple so all you have to do is VLAN 10 done it has been created VLAN 20 done it has been created so now if I go back to VLAN brief you can see 10 is created and 20 is there now we have to go to VLAN 10 first and move these two ports so F01 to 2 to VLAN 10. So interface range F01 to 2 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN VLAN 10 done. Now we have to do the same thing here 3 and 4 and move these ports to VLAN 20 so interface range f0324 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20 do show vlan brief now you can see 10 here f01 and 2 it has been have been moved to vlan 10 and VLAN 20, F03 and 4 have been moved to VLAN 20. Now the last step but very important step uh, you have to do the trunking. So in this uh, port here is F024. Okay, This port is F024. Interface F024 switch port mode trunk done. Now we have to go to the router 
router we have to do two things uh, we have to first of all create the sub interfaces sub interfaces meaning there is only one interface right here this line is connected to but we are dividing you can say like we are dividing that one interface into two since we have two VLANs we are dividing that port into two so we will do 10 and 20 at this same interface that is what we mean by sub interfaces so enable say no here enable configure terminal first we'll do the vlan 10 side so this port here is interface g000 right interface g00 we'll go ahead and make that up no shut okay now we'll go back to interface g00 and we have to give the uh, vlan number we can go with any number as you can see here this is the range but uh, it's a good practice to go with the same vlan number here so this is vlan 10 so we'll go with vlan 10 and we have to say now encapsulation dot 1q 10 okay now we have to give the ip address ip address 192.168.1.100 because this is from vlan 10 and this is a one network and the default gateway is 1.100 and subnet mask 255 255.0 so we're done with vlan 10 now we have to exit the sub interface mode so interface g000 dot now we'll do the vlan 20 side so 20 hmm? 20 encapsulation dot 1q 20 okay now we have to give the ip address ip address this is the two network so the default gateway is 192.168.2.100 you can see this is a two network so the default gateway we are giving is 2.100 on this side this was a one network so we given as 1.100 you can give any ip address but uh, it's, it's good practice to go with the 100 you know uh, or if you if you have not given the first ips to the pcs then go ahead and give the first ip to the default gateway and then the rest to the pcs so since i given one and two here i went with the 1.100 or 2.100 for this network and 1.100 for this network but you can give any ip address so now let's make sure this switch is trunking because that is important sit do show interface trunk and you can see f024 is trunking and the protocol 802.1q okay so it is trunking so which means now these pcs should communicate each other from one network to two network and two from two to one so that we have to verify it and we'll go to command prompt and ping from 1.1 to 2.1 ping 192.168.2.1 and it's doing the ARP request initial ARP request once that process is has been completed now it's going to ping as you can see it's pinging we are getting a reply from 2.1 okay it's ping from this PC also ping 192.168.2.1 and we can see we are getting the reply with this PC and ping 1.1 ping 192.168.1.1 we are getting the reply we'll check this PC also ping 192.168.2.1.2 
and we are getting the reply. So we have successfully completed this indoor VLAN routing uh, using sub interfaces or other uh, name would be uh, router on stick. You can see it's looking like a stick and the router uh, the stick is holding the router and uh, that's another way you can remember this. So it's a slight improvement from the last video. Last video I said there's a better way to do the, the communication uh, to make the two networks communicate. But again, uh, here are also uh, some drawbacks are there. Uh, the main one would be there. It's only have one line here, right? As you can see, there's only one line. So if something wrong with this line and this is down, the, then the network will be down. They won't communicate each other, right? So uh, it's not again a, a good idea. We would need uh, redundant links. You cannot just rely on one link. But uh, for the lab uh, purpose, you know, examination purpose, uh, you should practice this. Uh, so I, I would suggest that you practice this lab. And in the next video, we'll see a slight, uh, slightly better way to do this. Until then, stay tuned.